Great radio stations across the land, JoePags.com, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, email. It's all right there. Glad to have you along for the ride. And really glad to have back um, Sheriff Mark Lamb from Pinal County, Arizona. Although, you're in the big city today. Mark, how are you? Doing great, Joe. How are you doing? I- I'm living the dream. You know that. It's a new year. Happy New Year to you and your wife, everybody else involved. We appreciate you taking some time today. What are you doing in New York? Uh, we're here for the premiere of 60 Days In. New show coming out on A&E about, uh, that they filmed in our jail. Okay. Is that tonight? That's tomorrow night. It's coming okay. out tomorrow night. All right, so, and also tomorrow night, are you going to be on live PD? I will. I'll be uh, one of the hosts tomorrow night. Uh, they're doing a two-hour episode uh, right before the premiere of 60 Days In. Okay, well, cool. Let's talk more about that in a minute. Uh, in the meantime, while I have you, though, let's talk about the border, if you don't mind. I, I took a week off and didn't pay much attention to anything, but I know that the border situation isn't solved. We had Andrew Cuomo, not far from where you are right now in New York, uh, talking about how we have to build bridges and not walls and no border wall with a very thick New York accent. Um, w- when you hear that kind of rhetoric, knowing what you deal with every day, do you just let you just blow that off, Mark, or or, or uh, do you? I mean, do you think to yourself he really doesn't know what he's talking about, or he's playing politics? Uh, both. You know, a lot of times we think a lot of these people don't know what they're talking about because they haven't been out here and they really haven't spent the time to understand what the problem is that we're facing. Right. Um, and a lot of times we just have to blow it off because we have a job to do. We can't get focused and tied up in that. That's the politics of it. Yeah. We have to still go out and protect our communities. And that's truly what we focus on as sheriffs and as law enforcement. But what are we seeing on the border? And again, as Sheriff Mark Lamp in Al County, Arizona, uh, his 60 Days In is going to be happening from his county jail soon. It starts tomorrow. We'll talk about that. Also, uh, you've seen his department and him uh, on Live PD. Um, what's the status? Uh, we, we don't hear much about the caravan now. Now we're hearing about how uh, national parks are closed because Trump is no good or something. What's going on on the border? You know, that's the thing is that just it's, it's almost sad that they turn these things into political issues. This is something we're still dealing with where uh, every day we go out into our county and we're 60 miles off the border. We still deal with uh, illegals coming into our county and our country. Um, so we we sent our aviation. I think last month we probably had well over 100 apprehensions with our aviation unit. Wow. So it's something that we deal with on a daily basis. Uh, the media, they pick and choose what they want to follow for a while. Um, but it's definitely something we're still dealing with. It's uh, Sheriff Mark Lamb, of course, Pinal County, Arizona. Uh, it's a little echoey. He's standing, uh, I guess, is this is a lobby somewhere uh, in New York yeah, City? Yeah, the old Woolworth building <laughs> in New York City. Well, whatever it takes. We appreciate your help. Um, uh, uh, for, for uh, When it comes to the border, let's talk about law enforcement specifically. And let's not even talk about the border. Let's say that I've got a seven-year-old daughter. And I decided, Mark, to go from California to the middle of Kansas and walk with my daughter uh, with my daughter in all the rain and all the wind and all the snow up high mountains and down to low valleys and barely fed or anything and at the end of it she died am I in trouble or not <laughs> you would definitely have some questions to answer and that's one of the things that I've said all along is you know don't blame law enforcement we should be talking about the Poor parenting, the decision to bring a child into a dangerous situation right. like that, and, and that's and not. that's why that's why I asked it like that because, yeah. as you know, Pelosi and Schumer and down the line have all said Border Patrol basically is killing kids, and yeah. that's not the case at all, is it? We wouldn't obviously any parent who tried to do that, even in this country across the country in the in the in the bad weather through bad neighborhoods with no food, with no food, no phone, no nothing. Um, that would be poor parenting. And that would be something we should be looking at. And so, yes, you would be right in saying that. that I don't know that you know what charges you would face, but yeah. it definitely would be a, an example of poor parenting. I would guess at least child endangerment. You could probably add a whole lot more on that. It's Mark Lamb. He's the sheriff of Pinal County, Arizona. Uh, let me let me ask you this: When you do, when your agency does come in contact with those who are here illegally, I know you're running into children. What is the standard operating procedure? You take the kid. You get him medically checked out. What do you do? You know, fortunately, in our county, where we're at logistically, most of what we deal with are adults. Okay. And predominantly men, because it's about a six-day hike from the border through uh, through the desert to get to our county. Right. Every now and then, we'll catch some women and children in the vehicles. And what we do is, if there's no crime that's occurred that we can charge them with, then we turn them over to Border Patrol right. or ICE. If there has been a crime that has occurred, let's say, for example, a backpacker comes across, and he's got a 30-pound backpack of marijuana on him well guess what he's going to get charged and if he's in our county he's going to get charged with possession of marijuana okay 
Now he's going to have to go to my jail and he's going to face those charges. And when he's done, I'm going to turn him over to Border Patrol. Well, in that particular case, I would turn him over to ICE and then ICE would do what they're going to do. Uh, it, w- would it behoove us as a, as a country and as a government specifically to stop the politics and just fix the problem? Isn't that what Absolutely. you kind of want? And that's what we've said all along. As law enforcement, we're in a tough predicament because we're dealing with something that's very sensitive and we're dealing with it. We have to enforce the law. Yeah. We have to protect our country and our communities. We have hearts. You know, we, we see the humanity of it and we want people to come and make a better life for themselves. But at the same time, we're enforcing the law. So really what we've got to do is take the politics out of it. And we've got to hold our congressmen and our senators feet to the fire and get them to give us some common sense results. It's, That's what we need from law enforcement standpoint. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. And I know how hard you work out there. And I know how, what, what a compassionate guy you are. Um, it, you know, it's hard to be compassionate and at the same time look at somebody who just made a ridiculous decision. Whereas they could have gone to a border, they, uh, an actual entry uh, in El Paso, in Tijuana. I mean, just down the line, there are gates and, and fences and and open doors and, and bridges everywhere. But for some reason, they insist on doing it illegally. Uh, Mark, can we do a better job as a country? Not that it's really our responsibility, but can we do a better job as a country to tell the people in Mexico, Honduras, El Salvador, uh, and so on, Guatemala, th- that if you do it the right way, we're, we're a welcoming country. Stop doing it the wrong way. You know, one of the unfortunate things that you learn is you can tell people till you're blue in the face sometimes. People still just don't do it right. And we do a good job of getting that word out there, but then they still come here and people try to take advantage of the situation or they try to circumvent it or, or speed up the process, uh, the time, because it does, it takes time. And so those things are what get people into trouble and then they start looking at crossing illegally. Um, yeah, I mean, we could probably always do a little bit better job getting the word out, but at the same time, we are, you know, Border Patrol or federal partners are getting the word out. They are sending that message saying, this is the right process. This is the process you have to follow if you want to uh, potentially come into this country. Uh, yeah. Hey, Sheriff Mark Lynn, Pinal County, Arizona. I appreciate the time. Tell us about 60 Days In. I saw the first season. Uh, this season, your county jail is there. I was stunned by who did and who didn't know. How many people knew that these people were planted there to gather information and to do this show? Only probably about five or six people. Just enough people to, to get them into our facility and to be able to protect them while they were in there. Um, the inmates didn't know, the employees didn't know. I mean, obviously there were some employees that probably had a, a pretty good hunch of what was going on. Yeah, right. Uh, but they didn't know, and uh, it's a great season. Honestly, it, it showcases our jail for good or bad. We learned a lot. We've been able to implement a lot of changes because of that. And the key thing was, the reason I wanted to do it is because it gives you an inside look at your jail, and it at no cost to the taxpayer. Yeah, I mean, no, and that's, that's, that's so is. smart. How good is that? You learned all that information, didn't cost a dime. Wow. Yeah, exactly. And it was something that, uh, you know, there was a risk a risk to it. But as you know, the good things in life, there's a risk to yeah. uh, the best rewards. Yeah. How many people were put in? We had seven total people come in. And, and, and how does it work? They go in and, and they've got a backstory because the other inmates yeah. are going to say, what were you convicted of? And, they're gonna, have, and they have to have the story. And what if somebody's from that area and, and knows information? Now, I haven't seen your season yet, but I mean, but, but these inmates want to know who you are. Are you a snitch? Are you a cop? Are you a somebody? They immediately pounce on the new guy, right? Oh, they check your paperwork immediately. And you'll see that this season. They'll check your paperwork immediately. And uh, yeah, we had to create backstories. And the problem was, like you said, people don't listen, so it's hard to try to keep our people <laughs> to do. We tell them what the, the backstory is, and, and they still have trouble doing it. But in the end, it was a great season. It gets a little dicey in the end, so hopefully okay. everybody watches. It's it's a good one. Yeah, we hope that people will. It's on A and E. What time is it on tomorrow night? Do you know? So I think uh, East Coast time. I think it's ten. So I think okay. we'll be on um, eight to ten on. Live PD, and then okay. I think 10 o'clock is when it comes on uh, 60 Days In. And, so, the, and those are but make sure to check with your local provider to make sure. Yeah, and that's Eastern time, so make sure that you, you adjust it for your time. It's Sher- yes. Sheriff Mark Lamb. Uh, Live PD, I mean, that kind of puts you on the map. You're going to be back on set tomorrow night. Um, we learned so much about law enforcement for, from that, and, and I think that we, we see a couple of things, and keep in mind that I'm a big law enforcement uh, you know, a supporter, so I probably am a little bit biased that way, but we see how hard the job is. We see yeah. how, how immediately some people react just because there's a, a person with a badge. We see the kind of danger they're in, but we also see the, see the lighter side of stuff. 
all in all, Live PD, it's a, it's a very, it's a beneficial show, right? Absolutely. And you know what I like about 60 Days In is Live PD showcases, especially for us sheriffs, it showcases the roadside. Yeah. But a lot of people forget that we also control the jails in our county. And so that's a whole nother dynamic. And oftentimes it's the most time consuming and, and, and liability uh, piece of our job. And so I'm excited because people have seen what I do as a sheriff on right. the road. Now they're going to be able to see that and, and be able to remind themselves that as sheriffs, we're responsible for these big, huge uh, detention facilities as well. So make I think sure, it's pretty good. Make sure you check out 60 Days In tomorrow night, 10 o'clock Eastern. Um, one, one last question. I, I've never been to jail, never been to prison. So my perception is you, you go to jail or prison, you get your ass kicked every day. Somebody, you know, sexually assaults you. Uh, how, how is it that, because again, it can't be as bad as I think it is. Maybe it is. Uh, but how is it that you possibly can protect somebody who's innocent of any crime in the midst of people, some of them, who might not be looking at the outside for a very long time? Well, let me tell you, that was a nerve-wracking 60 days, that's for sure. I'll bet. Sheriff, we worried a lot about their safety. I mean, every day we checked on them. Um, anything that, if anything came up, we, we monitored the chatter in there. We monitored uh, just what was going on so closely because... You, there's no way to protect them. If something goes off, it's going to take us a few minutes to get to them. So yeah. this was something we were very worried about, but fortunately it all worked out. And uh, yeah, it, it, it worked out great for us too. We learned a lot. It's an amazing experiment and it's also amazing TV. It's Sheriff Mark Lamb, 60 Days In starts tomorrow night. He'll also be on set on Live PD. Sheriff, thanks for your friendship. Happy New Year. And let's talk again soon. Thanks, Joe. Happy New Year.